Well, I put that post up because it's one of my favorite memories okay. in my career because the waves were absolutely firing. And I actually got the wave right after the buzzer. Oh, no. Which was kind of silly because it was like a 12. And I just got shocked out of my mind and spit out of this like beauty. And, um, and so with the girls being back at, at cloud break and being challenged by those type of waves and grabbing your rail backside and having the courage and the ability to barrel ride well, I, I posted it because I was excited about it in, for myself but also for women surfing and, and posting it to encourage them. And later, you know, a few of the girls said that they were all watching it and being inspired by it while they're competing out there. And it takes time. You know, barrel riding is one of those things where you really have to put that time into it uh, to understand it. Yeah. Well, what became glaringly obvious to me in that post was like the barrel riding, certainly the barrel riding more than anything else that you were doing back like in the mid-90s, mid-2000s, mm -hmm. would win heats today. Surfing has progressed in certain ways, yeah. but your barrel riding and charging, too, um, would set the standard for a lot of heats today. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, but what are your thoughts on that? Like, what are your thoughts on why hasn't the women's tour it evolved in that last 10 or 20 years? Um, I think that it's, you know, riding big waves and barrels, it's a passion, and you got to want it. And you can't do it just because there's a contest, you know, in that type of a wave. And I think that that's probably the biggest challenge in women surfing is the desire and the passion to be out there and to be challenged by it because it's gnarly. You know, like I think about right now in my life, I'm 48 and I have a successful career in wellness and with retreats and everything and, and I no longer get paid to go surfing and so to go surf out at pipeline and backdoor when it's doing its thing i think more about it now in the sense of like ooh, that's a little risky if i injure myself you know yeah. what i mean and so there's you have to be all in when you're going out at waves like cloud break and you know chopo and pipeline and backdoor because there's there's great odds of injury and hurting yourself and all at the same time getting like the ride of your life and the right. experience with it and I think that when I first started because I grew up on Kauai and I grew up with the Kauai boys and that's what I was used to doing and that's all I knew was to charge or it's like you're I don't get to go surf and hang out with them yeah and that's what really pushed me and when I first moved to Oahu you know everybody's like oh this is the proving grounds this is what you do let's go and I'm like, okay. And so that's what I did. And I didn't realize until, I guess, as I got deeper into it, wow, like there's really no, not that many other girls want to do this. That surprises me. Yeah. But also to credit the women that are there right now in surfing, I think they all have great technique and ability. And I've seen great rides in the barrels from them you know front side and back side yeah so it's not a question of ability and why why haven't they stepped up to that level i just think it's it's a matter of like one having more events in waves like that you know i mean we had we had tavaru and cloud and uh chopo on our schedule yeah you know what i mean and then at at one point we had the op boat challenge that was the surfer pole you know magazine uh, specialty and we got to go to the mentalize yeah. with like you know top four girls and top six men in the surfer poles and that was amazing yeah we were getting shocked out of our mind the whole time it was it was epic and and so I think it takes that also um, and I, I see more you know girls I think starting to want to get out there and charge but you, you got to be committed you have to like take the risk for the reward I don't you say that you see girls that are stepping up. Who are those girls? Like, are they out at Pipeline in free surf sessions? I no, don't know I'm, not, I I'm not even around Pipe that much anymore. Like, if I take a trip over there, I, 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 I might see it. But, you know, I'm on Kauai. I'm just yeah. I'm surfing with my friends and still doing what I love to do. Um, but it's just a different different story. It's any, I mean, Carissa, 
you know, is a great barrel rider. Coco gets out there and, and, you know, every winter I see her get a couple of sick ones. And yeah. so she's still out there trying to push it. And I keep, you know, messaging with her going, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let's go surf out there together. Yeah. You know, so I think it's just a matter of, um, of yeah, more girls getting out there more often. But I think the biggest challenge is it's out of control crowded out there. Like, I don't even get that inspired to go there now because it's way, way more crowded than it used to be. Yeah, it's insane. And there's there's not really that great of a pecking order. Right. Whereas before, there was a big localized pecking order, and I got more waves like that. Right. So it's different. Um, there's plenty of other waves, though, of consequence that you can go out and find. You Obviously, if you want to get the spotlight, pipe is the place to do it. But in terms of like developing the skill set for charging and barrel riding, waves are out there. Sure, and I think that um, Kelly's wave pool is a great venue to be yeah. able to learn how to ride the barrel better. Right. You know, and they have the ability to get get there and get into that wave more often. You yeah. know, that, that last section is yeah. a drainer. <laughs> totally. So it's really helpful, I think, to develop skills. And for me, that's where I really learned my best barrel riding was when I went to the Mentawais and we were on boat trips because the waves are just, they're, they're machines for barrel riding. And it's different in Hawaii, like it's more unpredictable and the way that sections build up and the water's thicker, like there's so many different elements that come into it yeah. in Hawaii and you go you know, out to Indo and it's like, oh, there's nobody in the lineup and it's just barrel after barrel spitting. And so you have so many opportunities to build on your ability and to get that practice time in there. I'm curious, there's a detail in there about um you're talking about WSL not necessarily providing the opportunities mm -hmm. in terms of locations. Um, there seems to be a fine line between the event at Piahi. Yeah. I think two years ago, Kiala won mm -hmm. without completing a ride. Yeah. When, where's the fine line between like giving people the opportunity to really thrive and elevate the sport and progress the sport versus endangering the athletes? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's, you know, for me, um, I'm, I'm a charger, obviously, but I'm also thoughtful <laughs> yeah. of what I'm doing in the science of the body. I have, I probably have some like adversity with it because I think that it's a great opportunity for women surfing to be able to, to, to compete at that level and to be acknowledged and to receive the value of what they're doing in equality, but I also have kind of an old school mentality with it growing up with the boys. I think that, you know, I think about how many years and how much time all those guys spent out at Piahi and, you know, even towing bigger waves and, and paddling into outer reef breaks and doing all that stuff before there was even an event there. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a part of me that feels like it's a little bit too soon I think that they need to spend more time out there because it's dangerous and I don't think they're even taking off on the right spot on the wave right they, they're not paddling in with like enough momentum and deep deep strong aggressive commitment to where it's like I'm going but knowing that that's a good wave to go on too so it's tricky and 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 you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to do what they're doing. I, I give them a hundred percent credit for what they're doing and charging. I just know for me, like, as I was, you know, in the, you know, very first forefronting of towing and, you know, big waves and everything else, like the ability also comes with having the body type because there's, it's science, you know, and there's this gravity pull and, and I think that the the women are like for me. I just went. You know what? I'm not big enough. I'm five one and I'm 106 pounds. I can't get down this way. Like I remember the first time that I paddled in out at um, Tahiti, and the first day we surfed this like epic ride. It was like you know it was only like eight to ten feet out there, but you know how Tahiti is. It's just thick, so it's still gnarly. And you know we were just getting the sickest barrels. And then the next day we surfed. Uh, soppy noose and it was big it was like 10 to 15 feet big and thick and nobody was out and i'm in a boat with just girls 
And they're like, well, of course you're going to be the first one out there. You got to go guinea pig it and test it out. And I'm just like, oh my God, I don't even have a paddle. I don't even have a tow board. I didn't even have a vest that fit me because I was too small. And so I grabbed my like potato chip 6.3 because back then yeah. they were making the boards too narrow and too thin. And I had just a pair of board shorts and a bikini on. And so I went out there and the first couple, I got a couple sick barrels and got spat out. And then it was like, okay, you know, Poto was telling me, and he's like, let's get you a big one. And I was like, uh, no, just like slow down for a second. I'm not ready for this monstrosity of a wave to like eat me up and like destroy me. So just take your time. And because it was my second day towing, I didn't know anything about it. So when he all of a sudden saw this big lump come through and we were too far out the back. We weren't right there in the lineup where you just zip into it. We were flying into this wave and I was just like, oh my God, this is kind of crazy. And I'm like getting worn out before I even get into the wave. And I didn't think that I could just let go and say, no, I'm not going to do it. Right. I thought I had to because you're just in the moment of it and it's all happening. And you know, that's what I did. And so I let go of the rope and all of a sudden this wave built into a mountain of water and it foiled over me so thick and gnarly that I was like, wow, I'm in this barrel and I, I didn't even, I just feel like I'm in this house right now. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I felt it, this lift and I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to get down the face. And so I kept, I was in the barrel still dropping through this wave and I, the only thing I think I, I knew how to do is grab my rail. I'm like, this is the only thing I can do to feel like I can get down this wave and hold on. And so I'm in the barrel and all of a sudden I feel the lift and I'm halfway down the face of the wave riding the barrel and it lifts me with it up and over this like thick ass chopo style lip. And I just, everything went silent. And it was that moment before the explosion. And it's like, and all of a sudden you just, you know, they do it in movies where everything just goes. Yep. And it's this blackout moment. And then it went, and everything just went spun out, out of control. And it just ragdolled me everywhere. I unbelievably enough didn't black out and didn't really hurt myself. Shocking. It was just a shock and yeah. I couldn't, I barely, I, I don't remember if I took a breath or if I went under for two years. I think I barely like my lips, you know, touched the surface to get grasp for air. And then the next one hit me and he didn't have time to get me. And then he finally was able to pick me up and he's like, get on the ski. I'm like, I can't move my body. You have to grab me right now. And so he grabbed my arm and hoisted me up and took me over to the boat. And I could barely breathe. I was spun out. My, I lost my voice and my lungs got compressed and there was water in them. And I was shot for the day because he just whipped me into the biggest, most craziest thing ever. And I was way too deep. Yeah. And my body was just, it was impossible from the position that he put me in because I was, I'm 106 pounds right. and I didn't have any weights in the board. I didn't have any momentum to get into that wave yeah. so that was my big realization of like the power of big wave surfing and what it takes and what you need and i still i still went out and i you know surf big bigger waves after that you know i towed in to like a you know whatever it was a 20 footer during blue crush and everything else and and that was really cool and it was really fun but I just, I, I had a realization and I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick to like riding big barrels and surfing big sunset, you know, and, and, you know, maybe small Y man and stuff, but I'm not really wanting to dive into the other stuff because my life was more important to me than that. Yeah. And, um, the ability to be able to still surf and walk and, <laughs> Do you have footage? You know. <laughs> footage? Do you have footage of that wipeout? Um, you know, I, I have... It is, it's somewhere. You saw it anyways. It's somewhere. It's Jim Rusi oh, okay. that shot it and has the photos and the video. Got it. And I've been trying to get it from him because, you know, the stuff that it has is like such low resolution in it. Right. And I have to find where it is. But I do have um, photos. Yeah. And it was on the cover, you know, when we had Surfer and Surfing Girl magazines and all that great stuff, which blows my mind that they don't have any today. It's wild. Well, that... 
it was one of my questions later. Um, but what surf media do you follow at this point? It's just online, you know. It's that's the tricky thing. What what online? It's all it's what just websites? weird now. It's like I don't even really go to. I guess I go to Surfline the most for sure. Just to check cams though, or to actually uh, read articles and stuff. Sometimes I'll read articles. Like I don't have that much time in my life for just hanging out and you know catching up in that way. Yeah. Um, because I'm so busy with my retreat business and everything. And then I choose to do other things with my free time. But when I feel like there's something that catches my eye and my attention, then yes, I dive into articles and, and want to learn more about who's doing what, yeah. you know, and, and keeping up and, and all that. But it's Instagram, you know? I know. It's really, that's what it's at. It's I have, I have the, you know, guys and girls that I follow and, and enjoy watching their surfing and just what they're up to in their life and I think it's cool it's it's neat that we that I can keep so in touch with all that and still be you know on remote Kauai right um but I I think that there's some aspects that have watered it down and taken away from it for sure like I loved being able to get the new surfer and surfing and like you know trans world and be able to dive into the magazines and it's just fun and it's just it's old news now by the time you pick up a magazine That's right the challenge with it you yeah know? Um, how did you discover yoga or when did you discover yoga? When I was just probably a senior in high school and then really just out of high school, I got injured and I needed to understand how to heal my body. Um, and my next door neighbor here in Omao, where I live, uh, is a yoga teacher and she's also a body worker and, and so she, she like helped to heal my body. And it made me realize how important yoga is and the breath is and movement and, and being, being self-healing, you know, being able to really recover and learn how to take care of yourself. And then also having people uh, facilitate, you know, body work and, and um, nutrition and wellness and life coaching and all that good stuff. And, and that's, that's when I really dove into all of that stuff because I, I, I realized how much I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> And how much I really wanted to understand and learn. And so that was my first experience. And I ended up getting my massage license when I was 19. Oh, wow. And I wanted to be a chiropractor. I was super into wellness and kind of did it at the same time as my surfing career. And so when I was on the tour and I didn't have any sponsorship, you know, I was just, I'd work on the guys. You know, I, as soon as I'd lose out in the contest, I was like, well, time to get to work. I and I just that. line them up. And that's just funny. start working on everybody, and, and that's how I was able to get my way around tour until I got sponsored by O'Neill. Amazing. Yeah, and then I just decided, okay, I gotta, I really want to focus on my career now because it takes, it's a lot to be able to like really surf hard, focus on what you're doing, have downtime, and that's where I wasn't having, I didn't have any downtime because I was d busy doing body work. That's, um, you've navigated or you transitioned really gracefully out of pro surfing into a career. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't have the skill set to do. Like you were wise to invest in other things other than just surfing. For sure. And I was really fortunate that my parents taught me well. Is that like where that. that came from? Yeah. My parents are um, business owners and hard okay. workers and they own Brennecke's Beach Broiler here in Poipu. I didn't know that. Yeah. Nukumoy Surf Shop. And then my... Um, my mom is remarried to um, Bob French, and they, they do that business together, and it's all family business style. And then my dad, Ron Gordinas, he is um, he does um, build-outs for high-end uh, retail shops. He just did the Louis Vuitton over in Waikiki. And, and so they're all just like these great entrepreneurs and hard workers, and they always supported me having the quote-unquote surfing career, but there's like... Well, how are you going to actually make money? We know you love surfing and you want to travel the world surfing and do contests and stuff, but you, you need to figure out an alternative and like how you're actually going to like bring money in. And when I went to start my surfing career, my mom had set aside college money for me. And she said, okay, so I, I'd want you to go to college, but if the surfing thing's really what you really want to do, that's fine. And you can use that money, but you have to write letters to the community and keep putting proposals out to surf companies and to wherever you think you can to help support your career so that you can travel 
and do all that. And whatever you don't come up with, then you can tap into that like on your trips. And so I learned how to manage uh, my career and communicate, you know, with uh, endorsements and companies and kind of PR that. And so it really was helpful. Good for mom. Yeah. It was a really pragmatic approach to it. Yeah, totally. Um, she was, she was very supportive and really great like that. And she would, I, you know, finish surfing a contest and she, you know, try to coach me through it. Tell me what I did wrong. Yeah. She doesn't even surf. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, so tell me about the current incarnation of your business, surf into yoga. What is it? So surf into yoga started when I finished my surfing career, I was like, what am I going to do? And, and really all of my friends were like, well, you should really be doing surf and yoga retreats because that's what you like innately, like, you know, should be doing. Cause you, you know, I did my surf camps with the kids and we do yoga and I, and you know, help them with like their diet and just show them about how to eat like good whole foods and stuff like that. And, and that spirit of surfing and like some good, like, uh, I mean, life coaching is such a, a watered down word, I feel sometimes now, but without realizing it, that's what I was doing was I okay. was just being that mentor to all of these women that like ended up becoming the girls that are there on the tour now yeah. and, and they're championing surfing, women surfing. So, you know, taking, taking all that that I did for six years and the body work and everything else. And I was just so into yoga. And then, you know, Peggy Hall did that uh, yoga for surfers video with Taylor Knox and I. And so it just kind of made sense that I would do retreats. And so I made Surf Into Yoga a video with my friends, uh, uh, John Roderick and Chanel Sladix, it's a pro snowboarder. And so we made this like sequencing of like coming from an athlete perspective of like just warm ups and cool downs. And they're just simple like 10, 15 minute practices. And we called it Surf Into Yoga because it was like I was coming from my surfing career into yoga. Yeah. And that's why and where that name came from. And I believe that I'm actually the first surf and yoga retreat business in the world that started within what I did. Um, and it built from there. All of a sudden, everybody wants to do surf and yoga retreats right. around the world now. And so, yeah, and I started it at my house at sunset. You know, I was renting out vacation, renting out my places. And I'd have all these wellness um, gatherings and events and like, you know, live music and like this thing that we did, yoga garden, and we'd do yoga and do gardening stuff. And, wow. you know, Mike Love came and played music. And it was just really cool. Did some really far out fun stuff when I was living there. So it was, my home ended up becoming a wellness retreat center and a gathering place for the North Shore. Um, and so now that I'm back on Kauai, I kind of took it a bit away from that and people find I help them find places to stay uh, typically here on the south shore in Poipu and then I cater private retreats for them and so it's not a group retreat but it's all about them um, you know I just had um, a couple in a row and and it's just it's so fun because in in doing this customized retreat it really flows with whatever is they need and whatever's going on so we could have this grand grand old plan to like go surfing and do yoga every day and then all of a sudden they need body work and they need nutrition and they need you know my kinesiologist to come in and assist and we need to slow down and life coach or we need to go on a walk or whatever it needs to happen or meditate or you know change the program up and and re set and then taking like that language and behavior of what we know and how do you change it like what are the things that need to change in the rules and the belief system and the language that you speak and how it builds our physicality and like what our lives are what story are we telling and how do we actually want to go from here and I was able to receive a lot of life coaching the last few years of my career and my mom again I was just sucking at competing and I was so frustrated because I was so passionate with surfing and everybody was like, God, what is wrong with you? We are always the dark horse, but you just can't figure out how to win. <laughs> and so I, I loved surfing, but I'd get in a heat and I would just crumble and I just, I couldn't put it together in my mind because I was just so nervous and I'd, I'd sabotage my, my experience 
you know, in, in that 20 minutes or whatever it was. So she got me for Christmas in 96, um, Anthony Robbins 30 day program. And I did that program and I just discovered a whole new perspective of understanding that you can actually create your own rules of living. It doesn't have to be what you're born with or what you were told and taught in your family and in your community or religion or whatever it is or whatever you translated in your own mind because it's all perception. Mm -hmm. And so that next year in 97, I you know, won the Billabong Pro. I got two tens in the semi against Lane. I beat Lisa in the final. I won the QS series. I won a few events in the CT. You know, it was just everything came together. And it all made sense to me how to be able to do that. Yeah. And it really, it's mastering your mind. It's, it's how do you take your mind and control all of the maybe negative lower vibration stuff or the sabotage or whatever it is and pull it into your heart and let your heart be your guide and let your heart lead that vibration that's so true to your nature and spirit of what you really want to do. Um, and after that, I just, I really kept following Anthony Robbins and all of his programming and I did the life coaching with their programs. And I remember in, um, France and different places around the world, I'd have to go and buy a card and go sit at a payphone for like my half hour session with the lady <laughs> and do my meetings with Amazing. them. Amazing. And we didn't have cell phones, you know? Yeah. So that's what I did. Quick interruption. Rochelle will go on to explain how she constantly tried to partner with sponsors to grow with them, but eventually realized that they actually enforced more parameters than they offered in terms of a partnership, something that both brands and pro surfers should listen to today and perhaps consider a new paradigm. But as it relates to life coaching and wellness, last week we introduced our own partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp has reworked the counseling and therapy model by providing those things online in the convenience of your home, which also helps reduce the cost. You can connect with over 6,000 US licensed therapists. Uh, I mentioned 3,000 last week, but it's over 6,000 in their network now, which ensures that you find the exact right fit counselor or therapist. And if you're unhappy with your counselor at any time for any reason, you can just request a new one. So licensed in the US, this service is available worldwide. You can do your sessions through text, chat, phone, or video. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. This is not a crisis line. It is secure, confidential, convenient, professional counseling. You can find specialists for depression, stress, relationships, sleeping, LGBT matters, grief, family conflicts. It's all available on betterhelp.com slash surf, where there's a questionnaire to help you assess your needs and uh, to ensure that you get matched with the right counselor. You can actually be in your first session within 24 hours of going to betterhelp.com slash surf. Plus you get 10% off with our promo code, which is the word surf. And again, I'm proud to be able to partner with these guys. It is a great service and resource. I hope that it helps you, and if you don't need it, feel free to pass along the info to somebody who might. Okay, back to Rochelle. Was any of this covered in the surf media? No. Like, I don't know any of this no. about you, and I followed you. Yeah. Nobody was doing it's that stuff back then. Yeah, and, no. and when I started surfing to yoga, you know, and everything that I was doing, all this, all this great knowledge that I was given, and experience, and... You know, the things that just kept coming to me, you know, my friends are like, oh my God, you need to tell the world about this yeah. stuff. And I just, I don't know, I've, I've done that slowly, but I've watched so many people become huge in the media by telling them the things that like I've had in my back pocket all these years. And Megan Bubo, my friend, she's like, I can't believe that like all the things that you used to tell me like now are these great things all over the place and you've known all this stuff all these years. Yeah. And I just was fortunate enough to receive them, but also that I I was passionate about it and, and called it in and wanted it. And there was that that moment of like where your life has that fork in the road, right? And when I retired from 
the tour, I wasn't planning on just leaving the industry or surfing. I just was wanting to do it in a different way. And I've always done that. I've always kind of said, well, yeah, sure, this is what's going on. But I'd really like to be a free surfer at this stage and yeah. be a mentor and do all these cool things. And it's just, I thought that I was going to be able to do that through O'Neill. And right when I was signing my contract, they sold the entire company except for wetsuits. And so everything changed. And all of a sudden, the callback didn't come. And so I sat there with the rug pulled from under me and didn't receive my monthly check in January when the new year started of me becoming that, you know, where I was going next. And so I quickly, frantically had to vacation rent my house and figure out what I was doing and started going through my savings because it just wasn't happening. So I did what I thought best to do. I went on a surf trip. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I got to go surfing. Well, I need to go surfing. I need to surf some good waves. I need to go like, you know, see what's happening with my life and my career right now because I wasn't ready for what was coming yet. You know, what's funny is so many people are going through that exact thing right now with the Hurley thing. Are you familiar with No, this? what happened? Oh, you didn't... This Did was they, in the news last week. They sold. Hurley sold. Oh, nobody's contract's getting oh, renewed. Carissa's no off. John John's way. off. Everybody's done. So, but that's... The rug is pulled out completely. Right. Um, that's radical. But, so I think, to be honest... Yeah. And it's good. It's... The resetting is actually, I think, a really healthy yeah, thing. And is. I've never seen a scenario where paying 13-year-old kids thousands of dollars a month mm -hmm. to surf actually serves them well nor serves the industry well like it only yeah. serves the company who's using that as marketing that they benefit nobody else benefits i don't think that kid becomes a better surfer no. like once you have the rug pulled out and you have to reset and really find what matters most you actually become more actualized uh, more character develops you know and ultimately probably a better surfer because of those things. 100%. More grateful too. I'm coaching um, this girl that's 13 right now, uh, Malia, and she is such a good surfer. I'm so impressed with her surfing. I love working with her. And it's interesting because she's so concerned about what's happening in, you know, the elite level and with, and she should be. But from my perspective, it's interesting because it's all in the social media, so in your face every day. And then the whole sponsorship thing, you know, and wanting to get sponsored so bad. And I'm like, I keep telling them, like, you know, you have the best, you have the best team you could have right now. You have me as yeah. your coach and your mom has the ability to pay me and to take you to all the events and to pay for you to get like Channel Island custom surfboards and anything that you need. So just slow down for a yeah. minute. It's going to come. Yeah. But you know what? You also have to prove yourself. You don't just get it. And so, yes, you're a good surfer, but let's go win some contests. Yeah. You know, let's go surf the North Shore. Let's do this like a little bit more of like a slowed down way and understand the value of where you're going into and, and that you really do want this in your career. Like yeah. this is, if you want it, you got to earn it. Yep. It doesn't get handed to you. Totally. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fun. But yeah, I mean, so so back to that place of like, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go on a surf trip. And so we end up like, my dad, he's such a, he's so supportive as well. He's like, okay, well, I got a bunch of miles, you know, I'll, I'll pay for your miles to go. And so we did this like last minute trip to Micronesia and went with um, Kavika Stilwell, my next door neighbor that I grew up with here. He's a great barrel rider. And um, this guy, uh, Mitchell, that that was, you know, one of the boat guys over there. And he's like, let's go. This is the time. And Jamie O'Brien. And so we surfed one day, all day at Ponape, like six to eight feet and just off. It's off. It's nuts. It was just ridiculous. Best barrels I've ever surfed in my really? life. Yeah, it was incredible. And we got video and there just happened to be, you know, like some Aussie guys there and, um, you know, photographers, this whole deal. It was really it was fascinating. It was really fun. So I came home and I was obviously feeling really good, but I'm like, I'm still not making money. Yeah. 
you know, I got put in the magazines and I thought, oh, maybe there's going to be like a reset here and somebody will pick me up and, and I can just be that free surfer and be a mentor and do what I really want to do because I have all these great ideas. And then it, it just never happened. And it just, it was just baffling to me that like the, the surf industry was so set in their ways with particularly women surfing. Mm -hmm. You know, the men are all taken, we're all taken care of. I know it's all changing and all is a big word. Um, but the elite is where I'm going, coming from. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to, you know, cry into my pillow. I got to step up and be a big girl. And so I had to big, put my big girl pants on and figure it out. And so we made the surf video and it was like, I did this really fun, um, you know, five minute or whatever it was, four minute intro of me surfing Ponape and, uh, and, and Mentowise and um, the North Shore and this whole thing and then went into the sequencing and it was really fun. And it just kind of all that really just was the seed to start the retreat business and to dive deeper into you know being a yoga teacher and um you know doing low me and and all that and i and i had this really cool uh experience with this polarity um master and he stayed with me at my house he'd literally like walked to my property and said hi i'm here <laughs> and i want to um i, I want to have you apprentice with me and what that it looks like is I'm, I'm going to live here at your house and we're going to do this for like, you know, a few months and dive deep into it. And we did. And it was wow. really cool. And, you know, we just opened up the door for other people to come and learn. And so it was a it was a, you know, teaching space as well. Um, there's my ride. Okay. Um, well, I feel like I could talk to you for two hours and I'm sad that we can't. <laughs> That we're cut short on time, but I will say, because it relates to everything that you're saying, um, yeah, come on in. Um, when I came across your Instagram, whenever I started following you a year or two ago, yeah. you looked happier and healthier than I'd ever seen you before. And you always looked happy and healthy. You looked more so in yeah. your current phase of life. Thank so you. congrats. You figured it out. Taking care of yourself is important. Yeah. You know, being well to yourself and um, eating whole foods staying away from processed foods and dairy and all that stuff um and yoga and surfing know. you know being happy i was thrilled to see it you look, you. you're shredded you know yeah i feel so good it's good to see awesome well thank you rochelle you're welcome